macro market trends, stock selection, ETFs, options, just some of the topics covered in Cook's Kitchen. Well, are you ready for the next market crash? I use that word cautiously, but we're going to find out how prepared you are with our market timer, Kevin Cook. Crash, huh? I mean, you were not long ago, I think just last week, talking about market tops. Yeah, yeah. Now you've turned blue on us. What's going exactly. on? Exactly. So uh, this was a, a piece this morning in Business Insider. Uh, Sam Rowe does some good job, does a good job of collecting uh, institutional research and putting it together, um, mm. you know, whether it's from you know, any of the big investment houses. And uh, w so he's assessing the, the color and tone of some large institutions out there who are getting very cautious. Uh, one of the biggest bulls in the street, um, uh, equity strategist named Lee from J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. recently said, no more incremental buying here. For, for investors, you really want to look for a pullback to, say, 1450 1400 and then he's longer-term positive. Mm. But uh, so Sam Rowe put together some of these. This is his article today, The Next Stock Market Crash, Why Many Pros Think It Has Already Begun. He cites a lot of the evidence that you and I looked at back in November when I did that piece, The Mother of All Bear Markets, yeah. where we looked at things like the cyclical PE mm -hmm. and how that's at 22 times. Um, we looked at... Uh, uh, EPS estimates sort of topping and rolling over, profit margins topping and rolling over in the aggregate for the S&P 500. Um, here, you might, some might, technicians might argue, we're setting up a massive head and shoulders on the S&P mm -hmm. over this, uh, you know, 13-year period. And then the sentiment sort of thing. So he looks at a lot of things that you and I have been talking about for a few months here. Uh, what I want to do is, I got a great question from a subscriber yesterday, too, about what happens if I wake up and the market's down 30% overnight. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's a good question. I never imagined the market being down 30% overnight, so I thought I'd take a look at some of the crashes that we've had, single-day crashes and how they're related to longer-term bear markets. Yeah. So a great place to go is back to 2008. I call it the dark autumn of 2008, when the S&P fell from 1275 to 750 in 12 weeks, over 40%. What were some of the biggest single red days there? The first, uh, I've got yellow ellipses around those days. September 29th, I think that was when Congress rejected the first try at TARP. Oh, okay. And that was a big 8% down day. And I'm using the spiders here because when you look at an, uh, an S&P 500 chart with the SPX, you don't see the gap opens higher or lower. Mm -hmm. you, it, it's, it's more of a continuous thing where the, where the index seems to open where it closed the day before. But on the spiders, you get to see the gaps, gap openings. And uh, so that's what we've got here. Then uh, on October 9th was another big down day. Uh, possibly, uh, that was about another 9%. And then October 15th was another you know, 9% day. Uh, I've got a yellow line drawn for the volume. That's the other great thing about looking at the spiders is that yellow line is drawn across 400 million. We don't see 400 million contract days in the spiders mm. that often. On Monday, when we had a, one of the biggest declines we've seen in many months, the spiders only traded 245 million. So 400 million is a good marker to look at in terms of are we seeing heavy institutional selling and could that lead to something further down the road? So. Again, we've got three nearly 10% days, but the, they're part of a bigger picture. It was part of a bigger waterfall cascade, so to speak. So by Monday, you mean February 25th? Right. Okay. So what about the flash crash? Where does that fit? Ah, in? glad you asked. Let's look at the flash crash. May 6, 2010. I remember that day. I was doing a TV spot. I think I was talking about grains and agriculture. And meanwhile, I hear on the trading floor behind me, things just going nuts. And mm -hmm. I had no idea that the Dow had just dipped down 500 points. Mm -hmm. um, that was a 10, just over a 10% intraday decline, but it bounced really hard. You know, and this was a situation where the, some sell stops were getting hit, maybe a large sell order in the S&Ps, and a lot of the electronic systems either backed off, pulled their bids out, or there was a cascade of sell stops on the way down. And so you had you know, instances where big name blue chip stocks were trading at a penny. For, it was for just a, in a matter of minutes. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was, you know, I talked about that at the time. That, you know, that's a sort of a, a casualty 
of electronic trading. Right. Electronic trading in the aggregate is very good for the markets, does provide a lot of liquidity, lets the independent, self-directed investor, as we are, have more access uh, mm -hmm. to the markets. Uh, but this was a growing pain. I, that's what I really call it. It's, it's, it's a growing pain, and the markets needed, we needed to learn that maybe there need to be some speed bumps along the way, and you can't have the high-frequency firms sending millions of messages, you know, buy-sell orders, you know, per day that never get executed because it just jams up, you know, the electronic plumbing, so to speak. Mm. All right, so, uh, and you can see that the flash crash still, we still had to go down and test those lows. So we bounce hard, but usually these big red days lead to something more. You can see the volume there, uh, over 600 million on those two days. I just want to back up to uh, the dark autumn, uh, <laughs> 800 million share days in the spiders. Um, in mid-October, 871 million. Then in, in late November, there was another 900 million share day. So, uh, you know, these are heavy liquidation days. Okay, last one I want to show you is uh, the debt ceiling debacle of August 2011. S&P went down 60 points in one day. That was a shocker, but still only 5%. Uh, but and it still it led to an extended market correction, lasted for several months, you know, as, as Congress worked through its stuff, mm. and we nearly hit a 20% uh, you know, bear market status. So again, notice the volume, uh, big 600 million share days in that August waterfall cascade. And uh, you know, so that, again, watch that 400 million mark on the spiders to let you know if something bigger is coming. So what is the uh, proverbial takeaway from this very uplifting presentation? Yeah, wasn't that, hasn't this been <laughs> fun so far? So. Uh, here are my takeaways. Um, I call it crash test lessons. Okay. I, will the market decline 30% in one day? I highly doubt it. You know, if we talked about standard deviation, this would be you know a seven standard deviation move or something. So can the market drop 10% in one day? Sure. We just we just looked at uh, four instances of it. Um, but I think that that institutional sponsorship of the market because there's so much money in pension funds and endowments and insurance companies that are invested in the equity markets and have longer term plans, they're not out there selling in these, you know, five to 10% down days. You know, they're not selling everything and they might actually become buyers. So I, uh, for lack of a better word, I invented my own that institutions are embedded in the market. So their embeddedness tends to prevent massive sell-offs. Secondly, you've got exchange circuit breakers, which, you know, right. function pretty well, you know, whether they kick in at 5% or 10% and obviously, at 20% they would. Um, liquidity is both enhanced and hurt by high frequency trading, all of the flash crash. So, uh, you know, just again, a growing pain of technology. We, let, we can't put that genie back in the bottle and we don't want to. And finally, uh, waterfall cascades, as I call them, uh, into corrections of bear markets tend to happen over six to 12 weeks. Okay, so okay. yeah, a 30% decline could be around the corner as, as some people think. Um, but it's not going to happen in one day. It's going to be a process. So we look for these, these big down days and then see, you know, is it coming now? Because it's going to happen over 6 to 12 weeks. One last thing I want to look at, uh, Wall Street targets for this year. Notice, um, you know, a lot of Citigroup is, has the highest target at 16.15 on the year. And, you know, we're, we've only been, we got within 6% of that. Uh, who are the bears? Morgan Stanley, UBS, and Wells Fargo have year-end targets closer to 1400 and, uh, and I just talked about J.P. Morgan sort of being cautious right now and for higher later. So these are things to keep in mind, but the point is, is that the average of all these targets, we've already reached it, 1535 on the S&P. And uh, so some would say that the upside is limited and that the path of least resistance could be to the downside. All right. This is from Bespoke, by the way. Okay, well, right. we know you're going to be keeping an eye on yep. all of this stuff that's going on. Check out Kevin's other writings on our website, zax.com, especially in the real-time insight column, because there is where you can interact with Kevin in discussions that he opens up and or adds to. With Kevin, I'm Terry Ruffalo.